This video is brought to you by Skillshare. What's up guys, salut, welcome back to the fried rice series where I'm trying to master at a restaurant level that Chinese culinary monument chow fan or fried rice. So in the previous uh, episode, I did successfully master the stir frying motion. Now, unfortunately, even though it's a big step in my fried rice journey, it's not the end of it. I still need to cook something. That's what happens on a cooking channel. Sometimes you gotta cook something. In the previous episode, I've also established that you're not supposed to use a gas burner inside of a wooden box. Who would have thought? Huh? So I'm sure you must have guessed by now, but in this episode, I intend to build myself the ultimate personal workstation. Gas power, obviously. Let's get going. Right, so we are off to the hardware store. Sometimes it feels like I only know two shopping places. Either the restaurant supply store or the hardware store. This is the pièce de résistance, a MIG welding machine. Like hot glue guns, basically, but for metal. It's a solid wobbly base. Wobbly base. Wob wob wobbly wobbly. Wobbly base. So, let's talk about gas burners for a second. Initially, I wanted to install in my wok stove a high pressure burner. I've seen some on YouTube, uh, especially from people being in the US or in Australia where I feel like the outdoor cooking situation is bigger than in France. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to get my hands on high pressure burners. I mean, to be fair, I found some in like a restaurant supply store in Chinatown here in Paris, but the build quality was so bad. Instead, I bought a uh, German engineer, quite powerful yet inexpensive gas burner online. I think it should do the trick just fine. Obviously, I'm not saying I will never, you know, replace my burner with a high pressure. For the moment, it's gonna do just fine. Right, folks, it's been a uh, hell of a long day of work. Very enjoyable, but still a long day. And progress has been made. This is where I'm at at the moment. Basically, you've got a metal stand, on top of which you've got this crown with a round tube on it that will allow for a very smooth sliding of the wok. You've got my wok burner, and on the side you've got the controls for it. You've got the igniter, and then you've got the knob. Already I'm thinking about improvement. This could be extended to here, so I could be controlling like this, like a professional. I might also need to paint the whole thing, not because I wanna hide my beautiful wells, please don't look at them, but more because this is carbon steel. I was unable to get my hands on stainless, so this is all gonna rust in the rain. If I cover it in paint, we're gonna buy a few years, I think. I can't wait to be cooking on that beauty of a stove. Rise, stove, rise.
Amazing! I want to use it now. Unfortunately, I can't use it in this studio. It wouldn't be safe. So with that in mind, I'm going to pack it all up. I'm going to bring a few of my tools and obviously a few ingredients as well. And I'm going to head straight to the countryside to establish my wok stove in a beautiful garden. Am I slightly worried about all this? Yes, a little bit. I've never ever used it. It's only hopes for the moment. Never mind. Let's let's just not be too pessimistic. Let's remain optimistic. And off to the countryside we go. Okay, let's talk about today's sponsor. Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity leads you. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Be the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description and you'll get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So at the moment, I'm following a classes by Gary Vaynerchuk called Getting Started with Wine by Smarter and Taste More. That's just a brilliant title. So in this class, I joined the wine expert, entrepreneur and best-selling author Gary Vaynerchuk for a one hour class demystifying his primary passion, which is wine. I did like the very straightforward, down to earth approach to tasting wine, because sometimes wine tasting can be a snobby. In this case, it is not. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Right, so I just arrived at my parents' house. It's the countryside here. It's a lovely garden. I've got everything set up for a proper stir-frying slash fried rice session. Let me show you. I've got a bottle of propane which is safely connected to my DIY gas stove, my lovely wok. On top of it you see inside my beautiful gas burner. On the side I've got my ladle, a bowl of fresh water if I need to clean that wok. I've got some fresh oil, I've got my rice, I've got some beaten eggs, a little scallion and of course a touch of soy sauce slightly worried because this is the first time I'm going to be using my stove and my brand new technique. Fingers crossed, everything's going to be fine. I'm going to wrap up Michelin star fried rice in a matter of seconds. Very exciting moment. I'm gonna try to be as honest as possible with you guys. It looks a bit like <laughs> Maybe a little too charred and toasted. Probably because I burnt it to ashes. Forgot the salt. I forgot the scallions. Forgot everything. Forgot the salt, forgot the sugar, forgot the soy sauce, forgot the scallions. Let me get those eggs. The texture is somewhere in between a Formula One tire and a leather belt. Let's not be too harsh with myself. This is my first batch ever of fried rice. I think I can do better. Okay, let's just do batch number two. Now 
little fresh oil. This time I'm gonna go with the lower heat. Pinch of sugar, salt. That's looking a bit nice. Scallions, soy sauce on the edges. I'm gonna crank up the heat and finish that dish. Is the rice dancing in the pan? I think it is. First of all, in terms of smell, I don't have the burn flavor no more, which is good, because I've cooked everything on low heat, but I've cranked up the heat just at the end. A bit like Chef Samuel told me. The grains are nicely and separated. The eggs are, I'd say, slightly cooked a bit too far. Okay, let's dig in. Ben, c'est pas si mal. Eh ben, c'est pas mal du tout. It's very good, very honestly. I thought it would be worse than what it is at the moment. It's nice, it's light, it's fluffy. I can feel, I can taste the individual grains of rice. It's got some flavor. Thank you salt, thank you sugar, thank you soy sauce, but, but also thank you toasted rice. The legitimate question is, have I reached the paragon of fried rice? I don't think so for a few reasons. That dish is a little too oily. The eggs are slightly overcooked. I need to find a way to get all the egg pieces the same size. It would look nicer. The spring onion has been cooking for too long. I don't get that vibrant green. I get some sort of a Christmas tree green, maybe something darker than this. And then the rice, even though it really isn't that bad, it's far from being what I experienced at the Shank Palace with the Chef Samuel. His rice not only was like nicely separated and fluffy and light, but his rice also was moist. And I don't feel like this one is that moist. Mm. I got the technique, I got the stove, a nice wok, a nice ladle, <sighs> and yet, this is not enough. That's what's eating me from the inside. I know, I can do better. In the next episode, I'm gonna take each and every ingredient of that bowl of rice, and I'm gonna practice with it. I'm gonna try to understand it to its core, to its atoms. Atoms is probably a little much, but you get the picture. So, we're gonna see us in one week. In the meantime, you take care. Bye bye. Salut. Wobbly base.